Uh, Mike, I just want to uh, take us through some of the uh, numbers that have just come through in the last few minutes from the Eurozone. Uh, uh, business sentiment and also uh, business climate um, not doing too well. Slightly better than expected, but overall not too well. How much weighting do you put on these numbers? Um, well, yeah, good, um, good morning, um, Angeline. Not much, I have to say. Confidence numbers tend to be fairly arbitrary. If you look at US consumer confidence numbers, for example, they're at seven-year highs, yet retail sales are lacklustre, durable goods are lacklustre. For me, it's all about the hard data. It's not what um, people are saying they're going to do, it's what they actually do. So, yeah, those economic confidence numbers, there is a slight improvement. Does it really change my views overall on the Eurozone economy? No, it doesn't. If you look at the unemployment data in Germany, that actually improved this morning, yet that is probably the only silver lining at the moment in the Euro area in, in a sea of what is very disappointing data. And speaking of uh, weak data, we have had some dismal data from Germany recently. What does mm. this tell you about the Eurozone? And, and I know uh, you're in the camp where the ECB won't do QE. What can it do? I think the, the ECB is very much at the limits of what it can do without creating a political storm in Germany. And while German unemployment still remains very, very low, I don't think really Germany will feel constrained to really cut the rest of the euro area any slack. In my experience, Angeline, um, politicians in the euro area have a, have a habit of over-promising and under delivering and you're certainly seeing that in the context of the wrangling that's going on with respect to the Italian and the French budgets. They've had two years to try and get some of their deficit spending under control since Mr Draghi bought them all that time in 2012 and to be quite frank they've wasted it. And just very quickly the Fed on the other hand striking a hawkish tone when do you expect the first hike to come? Well, you know, the Fed have said it's data dependent and I think the Fed's got a very tricky line to you know, navigate here. They've got to strike a balance between not being too hawkish um, while at the same time not being too dovish. Now, the markets are a little bit lower today on the, on the back of the, the end of quantitative easing and I think what investors have got to get used to, I think if I could compare them to a small child on a bicycle that's just had its stabilizers taken off, let's see how they react at the first obstacle or the first pothole. At the moment, things don't look that promising. You may recall previous ending of QE, we saw drops in the stock market. I don't really see that this um, instance is probably going to be any different. It's going to be very volatile.